So we'll start with the intro to AI landscape. We're gonna then talk about what does AI mean for business? We're gonna actually then do a demo of the AI tools in action. You're gonna then hear about his uh, Microsoft's perspective on responsible AI. And the, we're gonna talk about the future of AI. So let's jump on in uh, to intro to the AI landscape. And I'm gonna stop sharing and invite you to share your screen now. Yeah, let's do that. So I'm going to share my screen. Let me know when you can see this. I'm sharing my entire screen and then I'll bring up my PowerPoint. Perfect. And yep, we can see it now. Awesome. Okay. So we covered a lot of these like um, concepts already in the chat that we had. So I'm going to like quickly show you a few visuals of what we just talked about. We talked about the fact that we are in this generative AI subclass of AI today when we are talking about chat GPT and these large language models. And as you can see from the timeline, it's relatively new, right? It's only been a few years, a couple of years actually that this technology is uh, you know, uh, gaining uh, traction. And chat GPT is the first, I wanna say consumer application that made this technology popular amongst the masses. And you would have seen various different articles and press about you know the the chat gpt application um, it is so viral that uh, i was joking that when my 12 year old son when i was asking him when did he see this uh first and he mentioned uh back in december that he and his friends were chatting about this on tiktok so this is definitely you know a viral tool that i'm sure uh, like we saw on the poll many of you have already played with um so the idea is that you've seen the power of a tool like this where it can answer questions and uh, give you human-like responses. Um, so what we are going to talk about is how do we apply this in your business, right? Which is, I think, one of the other questions as well. And when I talked about this Microsoft AI landscape, uh, you know, I mentioned that we have a number of different AI services. Uh, and apologize for this slide with a number of different uh, service names, et cetera. But like I mentioned, it's very simple to think about this. You can either build your own AI models and the tool that we have called Azure Machine Learning at the bottom helps you do that. Or you can use a number of different pre-built models that we offer. And Azure OpenAI, which is ChatGPT offered within Microsoft, is just one such model, right? And that's the focus of today's presentation. But having said that, it's important to understand that there's a lot of other AI services that you typically would be using when you're building any end product, right? So for example, let's say that you have lots of documents and you wanna process all of those documents and then ask questions like ChatGPT on those documents. Like what if some of those documents are images? Let's say you have you know, invoices and you're processing these invoices and then you wanna ask questions about any default payments that may have happened based on those invoices. Well, if these invoices are in scanned PDFs, then you need to first OCR them and then convert that OCR text and ask those questions to ChatGPT. So to do that, you need an OCR model. And our Vision AI service, as an example, offers that. So when you're stitching together a lot of these different components, you may be using some of these other AI services as well. So either use pre-built models, and we have a family of them, as you can see on the slide, and you can also build your own models using our Azure machine learning platform. And as you can see on the left, we cater to different personas. If you're a data scientist, you have certain tools you could use. If you're a developer, we could use certain set of tools. And then if you're a business user, we also have a lot of low code, no code tools, as we call it, where you drag and drop and build these applications without having to do any programming or coding behind. All right. So we talked about the OpenAI partnership already. So I'm going to quickly talk about the fact that, you know, there are three primary outcomes that we were driving. Uh, one is to make sure that OpenAI runs on our infrastructure really well. We talked about how we are bringing these OpenAI models like ChatGPT into our own products. So if you used Microsoft Office, right, Excel uh, example that Dan gave is a great one where I can just say build a pivot table based on certain considerations and it builds it for you. Or how about our PowerPoint tool where I can now take a slide and say, hey, this slide is very, it's, it's a lot of text, 
Can you visualize it for me? Can you add, you know, visualization? So those sorts of natural language instructions that you can give to these tools makes it a lot more productive as you're using, you know, any of these first party products. And you, you know about Bing. Bing is our search engine that also integrates chat GPT. So if you're asking questions to Bing, now you get a conversational tone uh, where it can actually answer questions as if you were talking to a human. So a lot of these capabilities are available within Microsoft, uh, within the Microsoft tool set. But what is interesting, and we use the term co-pilot, so we call it, you know, a Bing co-pilot or a Microsoft Office co-pilot and so on and so forth. But the idea is that we want you as our customers and partners to build your own co-pilots, right? Um, so if your company X, you want to build an X co-pilot that is focused on solving for a specific task that you are after. And that's what our Azure Open AI service offers is all of these chat GPT type models are now available for you to consume and build those same experiences, uh, but except, except in your enterprise context and setting. Um, so what are we offering today as part of the Azure OpenAI service? And there was a question on GPT-4, uh, chat GPT-4. So the most popular model that you've seen is chat GPT, right? And that model is available for you in the Azure environment. So you can use it and build your own applications. There are also several other models that we have as part of this Azure OpenAI family. So there are GPT-4, which is the latest version of this model, which Bing uses, which is a lot more capable than even ChatGPT. ChatGPT was trained on about 175 billion parameters. It's a lot of parameters. Um, GPT-4 has been trained on trillions of parameters. Uh, parameters are basically different features that you give to the model so that it can do a variety of tasks. So GPT-4 is exponentially powerful and more richer than even chat GPT. So if you've been, um, you know, uh, if you've been um, in impressed by chat GPT, when GPT-4 comes out um, as a, you know, generally available service, which is available today in preview, you would be blown away by the types of uh, question answering capability that it has. So this innovation is continue, going to continue to go forward. There are also two other model families that we have. One is to produce programming language code from natural language instructions. We call them codex models uh, where, you know, let's say I'm a business user and I want to, I don't know SQL, I don't know Python, I don't know Java, I don't know any of these programming languages, but I can actually generate programming language code from natural language instruction. So it can help you even if you're a developer to be more productive. It can help with things like code documentation and so on and so forth, and all with natural language prompts. So somebody jokingly said that the hottest new programming language is actually English. So you, all you need to do is uh, give it prompts in a way the model can deliver those responses uh, accurately for you. And then the last class of models is called DALL-E which is actually a model that can generate images. So, so far we've been talking primarily about generating text responses like chat GPT, but we also have the capability now, which is in preview where you can generate images from uh, text input. And we will also see how that could be useful for some of these applications. So I'm going to pause there, Dan, um, you know, and, and see if there are any questions or if you want to jump into the next section. But uh, that's sort of like an introduction to some of the Azure AI uh, capabilities and the partnership that we have with OpenAI at a very high level. And now we can jump into some of the details, uh, if it makes sense. Perfect. Well, I'd like to invite um, Jeff Cooper, one of my co-hosts, to ask a question. Yes, you Ram, thank you for the overview. We've been getting a lot of questions historically in this course about just concerns about privacy, even when directly using consumer tools like ChatGPT from OpenAI. And I think when, when we think about interfacing with other cloud platforms, whether it be Google Cloud or, or Azure, there are some other concerns about how do we make sure this is safe if we're integrating these tools into our technologies or, or building even data science models on these platforms. Um, can you speak a little bit to how Microsoft is managing safety when it comes to concerns about proprietary data in these types of cloud platforms and environments? Yeah, it's a great question. And uh, we were going to cover some of this in the responsible AI topic, but I think we should address it now um, so because it's very, very important. Um, so the first thing is the consumer chat GPT application that you've probably played with. 
is a research project that was introduced so that people can understand the power of this technology. So that's more of a playground for you to like, you know, maybe try and test out the capabilities, but that's not what you would use in a business context when you're actually implementing this technology in your organization. So that is why what we have done is we have brought those chat GPT, the exact same chat GPT AI models into the Microsoft Azure ecosystem. When you now use the Microsoft Azure version of ChatGPT, which is exactly the same, except you're now going to be able to deploy these models in a private environment, meaning that it's protected from public IP access. So nobody can see what questions you're sending to the model and what responses it's generating. It's all your private data that only you, um, you, know, you will know about. None of the data is used by Microsoft or OpenAI for any retraining or making these models better. In fact, we cannot even like, you know, see those models because it's, it's in your private tenant. So to answer the question about you know, uh, security and safety of how you would use these technologies, the way you would do that in a business context is to then use it in, in the Azure chat GPT implementation of this where it's all protected and safe for you. That's number one. And the fact that we don't use any of these models to train uh, or retrain the models is also the additional consideration. And then on top of that, the Azure cloud in general has a number of tools and processes that focus on what we call responsible AI, where we are making sure that you have capabilities to implement these technologies in a safe manner. And all of them apply to the chat GPT models as well. So the big distinction here to summarize is the public version of chat GPT, yes. I mean, that's a research project. I mean, there are considerations and concerns there. And uh, if you use the Azure version, our promise, and that's a primary reason why we wanted to bring this into the Azure ecosystem is so that enterprises and organizations can use it in a safe and secure manner. Great, thank you. So to parrot this back to you, when I'm using Azure AI, I'm essentially using a version of, of OpenAI's ChatGPT that's in your environment, in your walled garden, in your secure server, so that it's not actually going outside of the walls to OpenAI when I'm using that service. That is absolutely right. And so that also gives you another benefit, which is you can now make ChatGPT point at your data and have it answer questions on your data. Because a public chat GPT does not know anything about your data. And a lot of times you need to like use that same functionality uh, that it has in terms of language understanding and being able to answer questions really well. But you may want to do that in, you know, maybe you have HR documents uh, and you want to answer questions about, you know, some benefit plans that your HR documents may have. And so then since it's private, you can now say, hey, I also have these documents stored somewhere in a computer somewhere in a uh, you know, in a shared location somewhere, and you can t tell the model, by the way, look at this piece of information and answer questions on that data set. And that is all again done in a private manner.